Hi all, in this video I am going to discuss about the hematology practical hemoglobinometry. So in this video I will be focusing more on what are the different viva questions that can be asked and how to approach such questions for the exam. Okay. So first of all when you get the experiment hemoglobinometry the first question will be what will be the aim of the experiment. So we know it is to estimate the hemoglobin in your own blood. So, so, so naturally the next question will be what is the normal value of hemoglobin in a uh, human body. So in males it is 15.5 gram per deciliter and the range is around 14 to 18 gram percentage. In females it is around 14 the range is from 12 to 15.5 and in newborns it is more that is 16.5. Okay. So these are the different values you can remember that in males it is higher it is around 15.5 in females it is a bit lower it is maximum in newborns. The next question will be what are the different methods of hemoglobin estimation. So the classification is one major important one major method of hemoglobin estimation is colorimetric method. What is meant by colorimetric? In colorimetric method we are going to compare the color right. So the different colorimetric methods are Sally's method which is an indirect colorimetric method. Haldane's carboxyhemoglobin method and alkali hematin method. See one major mistake that students do is they uh, misunderstand this as calorimetric method with C A L O R. It is not calorimetric, it is colorimetric because we are going to compare the colors. Okay, so the three methods are Sally's method, Haldane method, and alkali hematin method. Okay, and another question that can be asked is what type of colorimetric method is Sally's method? It's an indirect colorimetric method. I'll explain why it is called indirect in the coming slides. Okay, so first is colorimetric method. Next is gasometric method. It is the most accurate. So that's, that again is a question which is the most accurate method of hemoglobin estimation is gasometric method. The principle of which is it is based on the amount of gas bound by hemoglobin and then released. So for example, if the gas is oxygen, we are going to calculate the amount of oxygen present and like that we are going to calculate the hemoglobin that is present in the blood. So naturally the next question here would be what is the oxygen carrying capacity? So 1 gram of hemoglobin can combine with 1.34 ml of oxygen. So here in gasometric method we are going to measure how much oxygen is present and from that we will find out how many hemoglobin is there. Okay, so that is a most accurate method. Next is spectrophotometric method. So in other methods, in colorimetric methods, we were comparing the color with our human eye. But that may not be that accurate. So in this spectrophotometric method, they use different wavelengths of light to measure it. So see here also the hemoglobin is converted to other compounds. But by using definite wavelengths of light, each of the derivatives are measured. So this is more accurate than colorimetric method right and finally we've got electronic analyzer which is an automatic analyzer so see this is a very important question that is almost asked every time what are the different methods of hemoglobin estimation so what are they colorimetric method then we've got gasometric method spectrophotometric method and electronic analyzer okay so next we will move on to the method that is used here which is Sally's acid hematin method. See you should know this name it is Sally's acid hematin method. So what is the principle here? The principle is the hemoglobin present in a sample of blood is converted to acid hematin by addition of n by 10 HCl or 0.1 normal HCl to the blood and its hemoglobin content is determined by matching the solution against non-fading glass having a standard color. So this, this might appear a bit complicated for you. I will just try to explain that. See in this uh, Sally's acid hematin method we are going to take n by 10 HCl okay, and to that we are going to add a specific volume of blood. So what will happen when hemoglobin reacts with this acid that is n by 10 HCl or hydrochloric acid what happens the hemoglobin will be converted to acid hematin. So it will change its color right it will be, it will be as time goes on it will change its color okay and once it changes its color we are going to compare it with a standard glass see we are going to compare that color with a standard glass. So that is the principle of the next question will be explain the apparatus used for this 
acid hematin method so the most important uh, apparatus is the comparator box so this is called the comparator box so the main important uh, thing we have in this comparator box is we've got two glass here which is a tinted glass and this is considered as a standard so naturally the question will be how is this standard color obtained okay so the answer is see the standard is a non fading yellowish brown tinted glass and the color of which is that of acid hematin obtained by treating blood containing 14.5 gram of hemoglobin per deciliter with n by 10 hcl and diluting it 100 times see basically what they did this they took hemoglobin or blood which contains 14.5 gram of hemoglobin per deciliter okay and then they added n by 10 hcl up to the lowest mark of this tube and diluted it 100 times so see, they got a color and that was considered as the standard color so this question can be asked for you how was the standard color obtained it was obtained by treating blood containing 14.5 gram of hemoglobin per deciliter with n by 10 hcl and diluting it 100 times right the, the next apparatus important apparatus is the sally adam tube or the special diluting tube the important things to be noted here are the graduations see they've got graduations in two units okay one is the percentage scale and other is the gram per deciliter scale so the co next question will be what is 100 percentage here the 100 percentage here is actually 14.5 gram per deciliter okay so when when you are asked to draw this also you have to draw it in such a way that 14.5 gram per deciliter will correspond to 100 percentage right now the next apparatus is a hemoglobin pipette in the hemoglobin pipette you have to understand the marking the marking is at 20 mm cube or 20 Uh, 0.02 ml there's a marking on the hemoglobin pipette at 20 mm cube right and finally we've got the glass stirrer and a bottle containing n by 10 hcl so one question that that you can expect here is why should you use an n by 10 hcl can strong acids like nitric acid or sulfuric acid be used in in the place of this uh, point n by 10 hcl so the answer is strong acids cannot be used because they are very oxidizing agent and they can cause disruption of the hemoglobin so only n by 10 hcl is used and this and also because the standardization is also done by n by 10 hcl to produce acid hematin so the question that you can expect here is what is the importance of n by 10 hcl okay so that will complete the major questions that can be asked on the apparatus next uh, important question that we asked is what is the procedure so we'll see the procedure very quickly so the first thing to do is we have to take n by 10 hcl we have to take n by 10 hcl up to the lowest mark in the diluting uh, in the dilute special diluting tube and then you have to keep it on the comparator box so uh, we keep the diluting tube in the space provided in the box and then we have to sterilize the finger with re uh, rectified spirit and prick it so that a moderately sized drop is formed and then you have to fill the hemoglobin pipette up to 20 mm cube mark without any air bubble and you have to wipe off if there are any what uh, any drop of blood on the pipette you have to wipe it off with cotton why because we need exactly 20 mm cube of blood if there is an extra drop here it will add on to the volume so you have to wipe off any excess amount of uh, blood drop that might be there on the sides and then immediately we have to transfer that acid into the Uh, transfer the blood into the acid that we've taken in the diluting tube okay then what happens then we have to rinse the pipette two or three times with the taken acid you have to make sure that all the blood has reached the sally adam tube you have to mix it and keep it undisturbed for 10 minutes why should you wait for 10 minutes because you want all that hemoglobin to be converted to acid hematin so it will take 10 minutes for hemoglobin to be converted to acid hematin by use of that n by 10 hcl and after 10 minutes you have to dilute the contents by adding distilled water drop by drop why should you add distilled water why can't you just add a tap water because tap water can contain impurities or salts and which can cause turbidity and thereby 
it can obstruct our comparison so that is why you have to add distilled water drop by drop mixing the contents with the stirrer until the color matches the standard so you have to add, keep on adding distilled water until the color matches the standard so this is the rough procedure of uh, this hemoglobinometry right next important question are what is the precautions to be taken so very usually asked for viva so the precautions to be taken are first of all when you fill the uh, blood into the pipette there should not be any air bubble because that will interfere with the volume of the blood taken so there should not be any air bubble in this column secondly if there are any blood drops that is sticking onto the pipette you have to wipe it off okay because again it will interfere with the volume of the blood taken and finally you have to transfer the contents immediately into the diluting tube and you have to note the time okay there should not be any delay why why should not there be any delay because the blood will be clotted inside this tube okay so you have to immediately transfer the contents into the tube and note the time and then you have to take the reading without any delay because on keeping the color will tend to deepen so you should not uh, after 10 minutes itself you should start diluting and get the reading and then when you hold the uh, tube in the comparator box you should make sure that the graduations present is not obstructing your view so if the graduations are there the whole thing will appear a bit more darker so you have to make sure that the graduations are not obstructing or interfering with the color matching and the comparison should be made by keeping the glass stirrer above the fluid level see for mixing we use a glass stirrer right but when you are comparing the color you have to make sure that the glass stirrer is kept above the fluid level otherwise what will happen because of the glass stirrer the color will be different okay and before taking the final reading the glass rod should be removed so these are the important precautions to be taken so to memorize it memorize it in that order by which you do the procedure first about the pipette then about that uh, transferring it to the tube and then about the comparator box okay next moving on to the advantages of sally adam tube is a very simple and cost effective bedside procedure and it can be used as a screening test for anemia why see for if the patient is anemic obviously the color obtained will be much lighter and thus the after even after dilution you will get a, de a decreased value of hemoglobin so that is the advantage is a screening test for anemia and a simple cost effective bedside procedure so now we will see the disadvantages of this method the first disadvantage is that there can be subjective variations in the color matching one person might feel that it is matched while the other person might feel it's not matched so there will be subjective variations the color of the standard can fade with time so that again can uh, cause a disruption in the actual value of hemoglobin and there can be incomplete conversion of hemoglobin to acid hematin that is for example the, if there are other derivatives of hemoglobin like self hemoglobin meth hemoglobin or carboxy hemoglobin that will not be converted to acid hematin so there can be an incomplete conversion of hemoglobin to acid hematin so these are the three disadvantages of sally adam method so now we'll see what are the different variations in hemoglobin that can be seen this is a very important viva question so see what are the different causes of increase in hemoglobin so it can be physiological or pathological first we'll see the physiological causes of increase in hemoglobin which can be remembered with the help of this diagram so hemoglobin in general will be increased in males why because the hormone testosterone stimulates erythropoiesis it is increased in newborns why again because hypoxia stimulates erythropoiesis and it uh another factor is exercise can increase stimulate erythropoiesis and high altitude again due to hypoxia can stimulate erythropoiesis so remember males newborns exercise and high altitude are different causes of increase in hemoglobin next what are the causes of pathological increase in hemoglobin that is seen in polycythemia so we know that decrease in hemoglobin is for anemia right so increase in hemoglobin is for polycythemia where rbc's are more okay next we'll see about the decrease factors that cause decrease in hemoglobin physiologically it is seen in pregnancy because of hemodilution and pathologically it is seen in all cases of anemia so this is quite easy to easy to remember except the pregnancy so in pregnancy remember that is a physiological cause of decrease in hemoglobin because of hemodilution right 
So that will complete the major and important questions that can be asked from hemoglobinometry. But there are some important theory questions also you have to look through before preparing for the exam. So if hemoglobinometry is your question, one important question that can be asked is what is the structure of hemoglobin or hemoglobin synthesis or what are the steps of synthesis of hemoglobin, derivatives of hemoglobin, what are the different varieties of hemoglobin and what is your significance, what is the fate of hemoglobin, functions and what are the common cause of anemia and how will you classify it. So these are the additional theory questions that you have to be prepared when uh, hemoglobinometry is, uh, is your hematology short experiment. So I hope this video is useful for you. Thank you.